Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this meeting of the Lifelong Learning Committee of Perth and Kimmel's Council on the 30th of March 2022. I'd particularly like to welcome our lay members of this committee. We're always delighted to see you. Um, in Audrey, can you Sorry. check the problem for the convener with the sound, please? It would appear that she's actually dropped out. She's she's completely frozen. Her feed's frozen. Oh, it looks like yeah. she might now be back. Are you with us, Caroline? I am, but you all went disappear somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what point Wait, that all happened. When did we can you, edit you, this? <laughs> yeah, you started to welcome our lay members and then we lost you. All right, OK, well, welcome to the lay members. We're always delighted to see you at this meeting and your, your contributions are welcome. Um, that's a bit discombobulating. Linda, can I ask there any apologies or substitutions for today's meeting, please? Good morning, convener. We have apologies from Councillor Reid and Councillor Ahern is here substituting today. And we also have apologies from Mr Adrian Ferguson and Mrs Margaret Conroy. Thank you, Linda. Can you also please take a roll call vote? Thank you. A roll call, please. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. When I call out your name, could you please confirm if you're present? Councillor Ahern? Present. Councillor Baird? Present. Councillor Liz Barrett? Present. Mr Charlton? Present. Councillor Duff? Present. Present. Councillor Forbes? Morning, I'm here. Now, I don't see Mr Martin Gowrie present. I'll call his name Mr Gowrie. We'll come back to him at the end, but we haven't had apologies, but I don't see him here at the moment. Councillor Massey? Present. Miss, no, Mrs. McCauley um, confirmed that he, she's here on the chat because she doesn't have any audio today. So she's present. Councillor McDade? Present, Linda. Thank you. Ms. Moran? Present. Oh, thank you. Councillor Pover? Present. Councillor Purvis? Councillor Purvis. I think he is here. Am I correct, Audrey? I saw. Is there a problem with Councillor Purvis's mic? He's definitely Yeah, you're on mute, Councillor Purvis. Apologies. I had to take an urgent phone call, so I am here. Thank you. Councillor Rebick. Here. Councillor Sarwar. Good morning, present. Thank you. And Councillor Shire's convener, I know you're here. Councillor Simpson. Present. And Mrs Weston. Present. Now we'll just go back one more time and check. Mr Martin Gowrie. No, I think that's everyone that's here today, convener. Thank you, Linda. Can I, ask if there are, can I ask if there are any declarations of interest from elected members in regards to items on the agenda? Nope. Thank you. And that moves us on to the minutes of the previous meeting. Can we agree the minute of the meeting of the Lifelong Learning Committee of 31st of January 2022? Agreed. 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 And can we please note the minute of the meeting of the Children, Young People and Families Partnership of 3rd December 2021? Noted. Uh, Councillor Barrett, if you've got a queue in the chat box, was that? Um, I guess. Thank you, thank you, convener. I was just wondering on the those minutes, um, if on matters arising point four, the youth engagement team, is, is it possible to have any update on what happened about the funding to the end of March, um, and what's available to young people with the youth engagement team, please? Contribution now. 
Good morning. Um, thank you, convener. Thank you, Councillor Barrett. I can confirm that the funding has continued for the youth engagement team and their work will continue beyond the end of March 2022. And they are undertaking um, focused and bespoke work in different localities across Perth and Can Roads, um, engaging with different cohorts of young people and working with partnership with colleagues in Police Scotland and in education services directly in schools as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. That moves us on to <clears throat> paper four, which is the Age of Criminal Responsibility Scotland Act 2019. Um, and I'll invite uh, the executive director to introduce the report, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, convener. This report provides the details of changes in legislation which ensures that all children under 12 years of age cannot be held criminally responsible for any offence. The Age of Criminal Responsibility Act 2019, which was enacted on the 17th of December 2021, will ensure that any crime committed by a child will be investigated in a child centred way. The change made to raise the age of criminal responsibility in Scotland from eight years to 12 years has the potential to support a positive cultural shift in how the harmful behaviour of children and the issues that lead to it are better understood and most importantly, better supported. We have colleagues from Services for Children, Young People and Families with us this morning, Hazel Robertson and Linda Richards who, uh, and Sharon Cooper, who will be able to answer any questions that the committee may have. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, can I ask if there are any questions on the report? If you put you in the chat box, please. anything. <laughs> Thanks, Convener. I was just wondering what child centred would mean. Is there a definition of it? Can I answer that, Councillor Forbes? Um, of course, please. Thank you. It's Hazel Robertson here. Um, it was really um, the the whole concept of being child centred is to look at the whole the the child's whole circumstances, so that it's not just the offence that's been committed, but actually what's led to that. I mean, what we know that child what we know about children is if they are involved in seriously harmful behaviour, it's unlikely that's happening in isolation. So that the child's whole circumstances that the issues for them and, and their family and their community would be considered as um, a child centred investigation. OK, thank you very much. Thank you for that. I'm not seeing any further questions appearing in the chat box. I think it is a pretty straightforward um, paper for noting, so I'll go on to, to move it. Um, as you'll see, I'm having my usual technical challenges again today. I don't know why it's always the day of committees. Um, we're glad to see this report in front of us for noticing. Um, and I thought that um, Hazel's um, explanation of what child centred um, is as a definition is really important because we recognise that from across services that are delivered across um, education and children services that a child centred approach to addressing any um, challenges or, or issues that appear with any children and young people is really important. And I think as, um, as our understanding of children's behaviours have developed and over the last 10 years, I think there have been major steps forward and that is recognising that the context within which a child lives can have quite a major impact on, on actions and, and behaviours, but also on the way that we, we help families to, you know, to nurture their children and um, to, to move them forward. So I'm delighted to see this paper in front of us. I thought it was very well written, very clear and easy to understand the changes that are being made. Um, and I'll ask if Councillor Duff will second it, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Convener. Uh, I too welcome this report and the explanation of the impact of this new legislation. Uh, effectively, no child of primary school age can be charged with committing an offence and thereby receiving a criminal record. The new legislation provides guidance around the new procedures to be adopted <coughs> in relation to relevant investigations, which will be carried out in a child centre way. And this will 
protect children involved from early criminalisation while providing support to victims. <clears throat> I think we're all probably aware of the evidence around the benefits of diverting children involved in harmful behaviours away from a potential life of crime from an early age. I also note that these changes add to the responsibilities of our already hard-pressed social workers, but I'm equally sure that they wholeheartedly support the new procedures being brought in. Convener, I'm happy to second the report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Draft. Can I ask if there's any comments on the report, please? Councillor Barrett and then Councillor Thank you, Convener. I'd just like to say that we also welcome this change to remove the stigma of criminality from children and provide greater opportunity for support looking at all their circumstances. Um, and I'd like to add my thanks to the ECS teams in social work and elsewhere and, to, and across the council and other agencies who are working to implement this in the best possible way. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor Barrett. Councillor Rebeck. Thanks, Convener. I think whilst recognising the effects of harmful behaviour on society and indeed particular members of the community, and we need to support members of the community who are, who are affected by antisocial and harmful behaviour, uh, and that goes without saying we need to do that. However, uh, more often than not, this type of harmful behaviour is a child, uh, it's a cry from help from a child in distress, usually. <laughs> I think we need to be very mindful of the um, effects of adverse childhood experiences and the relationship it has to harmful behaviour. Uh, and I think a child centred approach is absolutely the way to go. So I applaud the intentions of this legislation and uh, commend it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Rabbit. Councillor Simpson. Uh, thank you very much, Convener. Um, I, I too welcome this legislation, but to, to carry on Councillor Duff's uh, point, it will require some extra input from officers. So the challenge for the shiny new lifelong learning committee after the elections will be to ensure that sufficient resources are made available to make the very best of this legislation. I think we all agree with that, Councillor Simpson. Um, thank you very much for those comments. And if we're content to um, agree the report. Agreed. 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 Takes us on to um, item five, the reserve places in schools 2023-2022-23 and maximising capacity. These are really snappy titles, these papers. Um, update. I just invite Gina Devlin to introduce the report, please. Thank you, convener. Um, this uh, routine report is presented annually to Lifelong Learning Committee to seek approval to reserve a number of places within schools which have classes with a limited number of spaces. Reserve places have been operational since 1997. So I think if my arithmetic is correct, this is its silver anniversary of coming to this committee. This allows Education and Children's Services to take positive action to try to ensure that pupils moving during the school year can, where possible, still be accommodated in the catchment school by protecting spaces for local children. The proposed reserve places for 22-23 is a positive and proactive measure based on the planned arrangements for class structures from August 2022. This report also informs committee where any primary class capacities have been temporarily maximised during school session 21-22 to allow catchment pupils to be admitted. We have Karen Robertson here who would be able to answer any specific questions in relation to the paper. Thank you. Thank you for that. Do we have any questions on the report? Councillor Rebeck. Thanks again, Convener. It's, it's just a quick one. Um, I, I think with your indulgence, just, just before I ask my question, I just want to recognise over the last five years, the, the way that Karen Robertson implements this policy, which is to the letter of the law, and in my experience is pretty much 100% correct. Uh, so I want to recognise that professionalism before I ask my question. Um, and indeed, the way that Linda Brown organises the placement request appeals is, is spot on as well, often in difficult circumstances. Um, Sometimes, although the policy is implemented by the letter of law, you, you sit in a placement request appeal and the 
the human reasons for um, agreeing a placement request which has been refused is overwhelming. Uh, sometimes anybody with an ounce of compassion has to has to you know to do this. And my, my, my question is just around um, broadly, how often, if ever, does the council have a, a, a financial detriment to a placement request appeal um, being granted? I wonder. Um, whilst recognising that you know the council administ administer this scheme almost 100% to let the law, which is to be applauded. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Councillor Rebeck. Um, I suppose the circumstances depend on what the reason for refusal was. So, um, for example, if a placement request has been refused on the grounds of uh, the local authority seeking to retain reserved places, then that means that there is a space, but we're not giving it to the person who asked for it. And if an appeal committee subsequently overturns the local authority's decision, then that child gets a place that was there. So there is no financial detriment. Um, there have not been any circumstances um, where an education appeal committee has overturned an appeal where the grounds for refusal um, may be that there are no spaces and there would need to be additional classrooms established or uh, additional teaching staff, which would obviously have significant financial implications for the council in those circumstances. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for, for that great answer as always, Karen. Thanks. Thank you for that. Thanks for Barrett. Thank you, convener. Um, I'd just like to endorse what Councillor Revick said about the professionalism of Karen Robertson and her team and um, having worked on some educational appeals last year. Um, I completely recognise what what he's, he's saying on this. Um, I just wanted to ask what happens if you get quite far on in the educational year and you find your reserved places aren't being used? Um, if a family came from outside the catchment and there were still, say, four reserved places sitting, uh, because I, I mean, I'm sure you know, I'm sure you're getting this right, but it's not an exact science. Um, do you do you relax this later in the year, or does it mean they have to be refused? Thank you, Councillor Barrett. The and that's why it's very important the the amount of work that goes to try and get this as accurate as as we can. You're right; it's not an exact science. But in answer to your question, no, they're not relaxed. The the reserved places that are agreed by committee are the reserved places which remain in place as reserved places for the the whole of the school session. Um, if and, th and that's why this report comes annually and each school is assessed individually to determine whether circumstances have changed perhaps where reserved places or the level of reserved places may not need to continue to be at the same level based on the patterns of pupils coming in and numbers of placing requests but the, the reserved places that would be agreed today would remain in place um, unless they were taken by catchment children throughout the school session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Karen. Um, I'm not seeing any further questions in the in the box, so members will be very familiar with the format of this report. Um, it may be routine, but it's hugely important, um, and it sets out how we allow like, to be protected for local children to attend their catchment school. I would also I would like to echo Councillor uh, Rebecca and Councillor Barrett's. Um, observations at this point and thank all those who've served on the subcommittees involved in the appeals process over the past five years. <clears throat> it's all going remarkably yeah. well technology wise today, isn't it? <laughs> this happened at the final uh, meeting as well, John, you may remember. Indeed. I got kicked out of it too. <laughs> okay, it looks as if uh, we've lost the convener. I don't know if um, somebody could try calling her back in, and if not. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'll. Um, 
let's take it on. Obviously, um, we're happy to move uh, the paper. Um, I'll just and I'll get someone to formally second this. As as we've heard, as members are aware, <clears throat> this is a regular but extremely important report to lifelong learning. And while the body of the report is relatively short at four pages, I think it hides the extremely complex art of calculating the need for observing places in every one of our schools. <clears throat> Without doubt, our officers have become very skillful at forecasting these figures, as can be seen by the very high percentage of pupils granted a place in the school they asked for. And I'm thinking about asking Karen for next week's winning lottery numbers. Uh, seriously though, convener, uh, we really do appreciate the hard work, professionalism and years of experience which has gone into the final document before us today and uh, thank Karen Robertson and our team for their report and I'm happy to move it I think. Uh, convener, I see you're back. I'm back from all I'll the different I'll let you come back in and perhaps second it then. I'm sure you said lots of nice things about Karen Robertson and her professionalism. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what point I dropped out there, but I was just wanting to thank all the elected members and others who have served on the committee, um, the subcommittee over the over the past year um, and the previous four. And um, thank Karen and uh, Linda for for keeping everybody right and the process moving slowly um, and encourage anybody who returns after the election to make sure that they do support the work of the subcommittee because I think getting people uh, to, to devote the time that's involved is is really important to allow the process to to run smoothly. So yes, <laughs> sorry about this. It's all very discombobulating when you fall out and then have to come in on a different device. Um, so yes. Can I ask if there's any comments on the report after I've seconded it? <laughs> I think Councillor Purvis has a C in the chat in case you can't see that convener. I just lost it, thank you. Councillor Purvis. Um, thank you convener. I think most of the, the points have already been made um, in relation to uh, thanks to, to Karen Robertson um, and her team for her efforts. Um, I'd just like to say particular thanks in relation to um, the, the placing requests um, in Kinrosshire and in particular Kinross High School and Kinross Primary School. Um, this has been an issue, a long standing issue and, and one that has been um, at the forefront um, locally um, since uh, the start of this uh, term. And I do appreciate the time that Karen gave um, at the start of the, the term to uh, go through mm. with me and um, how the process works um, and also um, how we ensured that we had sufficient uh, placing, um, sufficient reserve places um, in uh, in the uh, schools um, because it is a matter of local concern as a result of the, the significant level of house building um, that is going on um, and it hopefully provides some reassurance um, that anyone who does move into the area will be able to go to the relevant school. Um, so just to add my thanks um, to Karen and her team. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Purvis. Councillor Simpson. Thank you, convener. Uh, this will be the last opportunity at this committee I will have to say something nice about Karen Robertson and Linda Brown, and I didn't want to miss the opportunity. Um, over the last 19 years, I've found them to be the most helpful of colleagues. Uh, and although sometimes the uh, places requests sort of seem a bit like a dark art, uh, Karen has it mastered completely. And I've always had every confidence in the assistance uh, that I've received, both from her and Linda. Um, and I'd just like to, to just thank them personally. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sure they appreciate that, Councillor Simpson. Um, not seeing any further comments in the chat box, but then who knows with my internet I, connection today. I have, I have <laughs> got one to be in that, actually. Councillor Rebick. Uh, thank you. Uh, just to underline uh, very briefly, uh, again, my thanks to um, Linda Brown and Karen Robertson for their professional and courtesy over the years, uh, which has been immaculate. But also, um, as I've alluded to before, the placement request appeal committees are the most emotionally draining thing I have done in my five years. And I just want to thank colleagues from across the political spectrum that I have sat on these um, committees with and um, yeah, it's appreciated. Thanks. Thank you for that. I'm sure I'm sure officers and colleagues appreciate appreciate your words. So with no further uh, comments, can we agree the report? Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. 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 OK.
And that brings us on to item six and um, possibly emotional, but maybe not. <laughs> we'll wait and see what our response is to this. Um, today we have the opportunity to thank, we've thanked Karen Robertson, and we thank Linda Brown and other officers um, for the um, efforts that they've made um, done, but today we have the opportunity for a valedictory for Carol Taylor, who will be leaving uh, the council um, in the next couple of weeks. And I have uh, been provided by her colleagues with some uh, warm words. Sorry, there the phone's going. Oh my goodness me, what a nightmare today. Um, some warm words. So Carol, brace yourself and you can you can deal with your colleagues afterwards. Carol joined the District Council in 1982 after studying business studies and languages and working in France and Germany for a couple of years. She was employed on a three month temporary contract, as this is how it always starts Carol, in housing repairs and nearly 40 years later she's still here. Carol then moved on to what was called the computer section two years later as a computer operator. Don't even think we have such titles anymore. The whole computer section was six people and the council only had systems of ledgers, housing repairs and rents. People still use typewriters. There are probably still some lurking around in the back of Polar House or somewhere. The use of computers and the size of the department grew and Carol spent the next 20 years in IT in the early days as a programmer, but later as a project manager and team leader. Some of her big projects while in IT were, and they, these are brilliant, local government reorganisation and the merger of staff and systems from Tayside Regional Council and the District Council, the introduction of the Data Protection Act in 1998 and the Millennium Bug in the year 2000, where she was the year 2000 project manager. The team did such a great job that everyone thought the bug was all made up. I think I might mention that Millennium bug, bug to my kids tonight and see what they say about it. As time passed, Carol's role became less technical and more about managing people, projects and change. So in 2004, she moved into the role of modernisation program, man program, program manager in the chief executive service. Carol led the customer first program and with her team established the customer service centre, implemented a customer relationship management system, redesigned the council website, introduced customer service training and customer service standards. The team also introduced a process improvement methodology, methodology called Kazen, I remember hearing about that, to the council which focused on customer service and empowered staff to make change. In 2011, Carol joined ECS as part of the council restructure. She was the corporate change manager at this point, but Carol took over in resource management, which is her current post. In her time in this post, Carol and her team have delivered a huge number of capital replacement or refurbishment programmes, which have improved the learning estate within Perth and King Ross. These include, and wait for this list, this is impressive, Creef Primary School, Oak Bank Primary School, Ayloth Primary School, Long Forgan Primary School, Errol Primary School, Insure Primary School, Ken Ross Primary School, Tulloch Primary School, Pitcairn Primary School, and the Sports Hall at Perth High School. Carol's teams have also delivered three nursery upgrade programmes, 600 hours, two years old, and most recently, 1140 hours. Over the past five years, Carol, her team and colleagues have also progressed the school estate transformation programme. This has been a huge undertaking required, requiring a wide skill set and involving a large amount of community engagement. I recall attending many of those public meetings with Carol and especially a very wet afternoon in North Muirton where it was fueled entirely by chocolate buttons. As part of her role in ECS, Carol has contributed to many lifelong learning committees and also to the school estate subcommittee before that. In November 2021 Lifelong Learning Committee approved a new learning estate strategy and a learning estate management plan for the next three years. So Carol's presence or at least her plans will still be with us for quite some time. Carol, thank you for all you've done right across Perth and King Ross. There are communities that have benefited from your efforts and will do for generations to come. I know you've got lots of plans for the future and we wish you well and hope that you'll keep in touch. And we really are sorry that we're not able to be with you in person just to see mostly the mortification on your face um, as you realise that we've we've highlighted 40 years of public service um, across Perth and King Ross. And I don't know if we can do this virtually, but I think you deserve a massive round of applause and our thanks. Yeah. Do you want to say something, Carol, or have you disappeared? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I've, yeah, 
I didn't realise I'd so, had so many fantastic job titles and I've obviously been very busy over the last 40 years. Um, yes, um, I can't believe the time has passed so quickly. Um, now, ever, now everyone knows my age, well almost, <laughs> um, but on a good day I would say I still feel 35. <laughs> Um, I know, on a good day that is obviously. Um, I've had, I've had three or four careers within the council, and I think I've been really lucky to uh, to have basically to have enjoyed those three or four different careers. Um, but what's made the difference and what's made me stay is all the fantastic and inspirational people that I've worked with, past and present. So. Um, I want to keep it brief. Um, they have made the challenging times bearable and the good times really joyful. Um, I'd just like to thank everyone at Lifelong Learning Committee and all of the officers um, for the support that they've given me over the last five years. And I am genuinely quite embarrassed <laughs> and almost speechless. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Carol, and, and thank you, Greg and, and team, for making sure that we had that full 40 years of uh, public service to, to, to recognise, because um, it's quite a career. Well done, and thank you very much, and enjoy, enjoy the next chapter. Um, and that brings us to the end of the meeting. It's almost very fitting that we got to, to say thank you to, to Carol bringing to the end this um, five-year session. Um, I'd like to thank Sheena, Jackie, Sharon and all the officers, there's so many of them that I, I'd be worried that I'd miss somebody out. Um, but we know that you've you've been um, huge support keeping us right and um, uh, just making sure that the, the business of education, children's services that's been reported to this committee has been, it's probably the most, uh, there's other conveners on this uh, call, but there, I would say it's one of the most varied uh, services that we have, um, but it's also the service, and, and I know that Sheena and her colleagues take huge pride that it really does make a real difference to children, young people, their families, and to the wider communities, the, the business that, that Sheena and her team do day in, day out, and none more so than over the last two years when we've been hit by something I don't think anybody had ever imagined that we would we would live through. Um, and what we saw across ECS was unbounded compassion um, and just a, a real um, willingness to dig in and, and, and deal with everything that needed to be done to, to keep people safe, but mostly to, to look after those children and young people that, that needed to have eyes on them um, when when there weren't physical people around to, to keep them, you know, just keep making sure that they were OK and that their families were being supported as they needed to be. Um, and I think I think the legacy of that will live on across the service for a long time to come. Um, it's not been the easiest committee. We've had our disagreements on, on different areas, but I think we've always done it in a courteous and, and um, professional manner. And, and as convener, I'm very grateful for the, the, the lively and passionate debate that's gone in, on in the, in the chamber and in the virtual chamber. But the, um, I suppose at the end of the day, we've all had the best interests of, again, children, young people and their families and communities across Perth and Ross. Um, so I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it um, and look forward to the future. And for those who are standing for election, best wishes. For those who are not coming back, and, and I know there's a few of you that are retiring or not standing again, very best wishes and, and thank you for all your contributions. Um, I'm not going to single anyone out in particular, but you all know that I know that you've all got um, areas of great interest and, and expertise and, and thank you for that because your contribution has been really important and valued. I'm not sure if anyone else has anything they want to make um, a comment. There's a couple oh, of requests for comments. Uh, Councillor McDeed and then Councillor Rebick. Thank you. Thank you, convener. Um, and first of all, thank you for uh, your leadership of the committee over the past uh, five years. Um, and uh, it has been uh, uh, an interesting and a challenging five years uh, to be convener of the committee um, and indeed to be a member of the committee. Um, and uh, I would pay tribute to all the officers. Uh, in particular, I would pay tribute to Carol Taylor, who I have um, caused many an hour of work to. Um, so uh, coming up with all sorts of ideas and schemes that uh, she had to help me with. So um, thank you very much, Carol. Um, and I think in one week we once did spend 40 hours at consultation events in Highland Perthshire, and um, so you have to put up with that. So I, I apologise for that, but um, you, you did an enormous amount of work. Um, 
on behalf of the committee. So thank you um, to all the officers and indeed um, it has been a, a fairly well natured uh, committee over the past uh, five years. Um, uh, I think there's only a couple of times that we had to break for recesses and I think they were all in one meeting pretty much. So, um, you know, we've done pretty well, I think, over the past five years. Uh, and just want to thank everyone for their um, uh, sort of common aim to uh, do the best for our children. As you say, convener, although we didn't necessarily always agree on the way to do that, um, I think we all had the best interests at heart. So thank you very much for your leadership and to uh, the officer for their support over the past five years. Thank you, Councillor McDade. Councillor Rebick. Thanks again, convener, and it's definitely a day for saying nice things. They're meant sincerely, and if I could just very briefly um, add my thanks to Carol Taylor as well. Um, I've, I've not known you as long as other people, Carol, but I know the two things that I've probably worked uh, with you on were Highland Pesture, Leonard Partnership and 1140 Hours Child Care Expansion, both of which have been hugely challenging things, but nonetheless um, projects of great value and worth. Uh, I've appreciated your direct approach and I've also appreciated your sense of humour, which also exists. And yeah, all the best, Carol. Uh, also, uh, to echo the convener's comments about the ECS team, in my opinion, I'm biased. It's definitely the most important committee. Um, I'll get away from other people for saying that, but in my opinion, it's the most important committee and the, the professionalism and level of commitment that actually Sheena and Sharon and Jackie and, and all the team have is exceptional and I've thoroughly enjoyed the five years working with you. I've enjoyed working with you, Xander, um, in opposition, if you like. It's been a pleasure. And lastly, as has also been alluded to, convener, um, although we sometimes disagree on how to get to where we want to get to, I think by and large we're agreed on where we want to go. And you have convened this committee with professionalism and courtesy and skill. And I think I would like uh, that to be officially recorded. And the way that um, you and I have interacted and dealt with each other, uh, again, from your point of view, it's been courteous, it's been professional, and it's been friendly, and I've appreciated that. So I just want to say um, best wishes to everybody, whatever happens from, from here on in. Thank you. Thank you for those words, Councillor Rebick. And uh, I think the final uh, thank you would be to the the non-councillor members of this committee. I never like the word lay members because it's I don't really think people necessarily know what that means. But the people who represent the uh, either the the churches or the parents or the teachers, um, I think that's our our main group. So, and we really appreciate you being there. And we hope that in the next session you'll, um, if if you're back in, in your various roles, that you'll you'll contribute to making that that contribution um, which is valued um, and a very final comment from me and, and it's just something probably because it's quite live in our house but I'm thinking about all those young people that are heading into exams after the holidays particularly those who've not sat exams before um, and, and we just want to, to wish you all well and, and all your teachers and those supporting you through the exam period um, because I think the last two years you, you guys are the ones that probably had the brunt of of the of the lockdowns and the the changes to the the learning experience etc. So we really do uh, we're rooting for you um, and we we wish you all the all the very best. So with those words, we bring this uh, session of lifelong learning to a close, and um, we we'll look forward to seeing what the future brings. Thank you.